Welcome to our video on the Laplace transform. We're Emma and Miranda, and we're here to step you through understanding this analytic technique. We can use differential equations to describe phenomena in the physical world. We know that solutions to differential equations must be either exponentials, e to the alpha t, or sinusoids, sine j omega t. Because sinusoids can be written as an exponential, e to the j omega t, all solutions to differential equations are some linear combination of exponentials e to the alpha j omega t. It is this property of differential equations that allows for Fourier and Laplacian analysis. Fourier transforms are used to convert signals based in the time domain to the frequency domain in order to determine specific properties of the signal. Taking the Fourier transform allows us to observe the signal's frequency response, which refers to the most prevalent frequencies of oscillation in the signal. The image shown gives a visual representation of how the Fourier transform breaks down a signal into its component signals. The formula shown is the Fourier transform. Mathematically, we find the Fourier transform of a time function by multiplying the function by a set of sinusoids increasing incrementally in frequency. We are able to find the transform by integrating each product over all time to find the importance of that specific frequency. The Fourier transform allows us to analyze signals in terms of sinusoids, but if we want to analyze them in terms of both exponentials and sinusoids, we must multiply the function by an exponential term. This dual analysis is accomplished using the Laplace transform, defined traditionally below, where the exponential term is defined as the complex number s equals sigma plus i omega. What this shows is effectively multiplying a function by an exponential term e to the sigma t, then taking the Fourier transform of the product. The output of this one calculation for sigma equals zero is shown here. By following this process, sweeping sigma, then sweeping through the frequencies by means of the Fourier transform, we are able to continuously populate the s-plane. Each s-point is defined using ordered pair sigma omega corresponding to the exponential and oscillatory behavior of that function. Each point in the s-plane is defined as a complex number. This makes visualizing the output of the Laplace transform a little difficult because we are dealing with the complex output of a complex input. Often, the output is visualized the same way as the Fourier transform, that is, the separation of magnitude and phase information, shown as a sample magnitude output of a continuously populated Laplace transform. The transfer function of an equation is the Laplace transform of its output over the Laplace transform of its input. For example, here we find the transfer function of a mass spring damper system. Because the Laplace transform of a function is unique, in fact we cannot have an inverse Laplace transform if this was not true, we see here that the transfer function must also be unique. A transfer function is fully defined by its unique set of poles and zeros. A zero in the s-plane occurs when the numerator of the transfer function is equal to zero. Zeros don't tell us much about the long-term behavior of the function, but have the unique ability to cancel out a pole at the same location. A pole in the s-plane occurs when the denominator of the transfer function is equal to zero. The pole's location in the s-plane dictates the long-term behavior of the function at that specific ordered pair. From the example transfer function shown here, we can see that this system has a zero at s equals 1 and poles at s equals 1 and s equals 2. Upon further inspection, we see that the zero at s equals 1 cancels the pole at the same location, leaving us with only the pole at s equals 2. The location of the poles, as previously established, can tell us about the long-term behavior of the function. The image on the left shows a sample pole zero diagram with four poles and one zero. Poles that lie on the real axis correspond to a characteristic growth if positive, or decay if negative. The behavior of the function near the negative real pole is known as overdamped. The function will decay without oscillating at the pole. The behavior of the function near the positive real pole is one of growth, and because it does not trend asymptotically towards a number, the system behavior is unstable. The pole exclusively on the imaginary axis tells us about an oscillation at that frequency. The oscillation does not decay, and is known as an undamped response. The pole in the second quadrant is complex, which tells us about a response that is simultaneously oscillating towards infinity and experiencing exponential decay. This is known as an underdamped response. Second order systems and above can also exhibit critically damped behavior. This is when two poles in the system are at the same negative real location. The image on the right demonstrates critically damped behavior in a second order system. 
The inverse Laplace transform, as the name might suggest, seeks to define a time-based function from its frequency-based transfer function. The formula shown does exactly this. The easiest way to conceptualize the inverse transform is to step backwards through the Laplace transform. All right, let's say we start with the transfer function of three over s minus eight. We're going to multiply this transfer function by all exponentials of the form e to the st sweeping through all of our complex s values. We're going to take some logic jumps here, but check out our paper for a more in-depth description. A pole is mathematically analogous to singularity, so let's consider an ideal vortex centered at this point instead. The integral of a vortex is the same as finding a circulation. We know that the circulation of the vortex 1 over z is 2 pi i as long as our loop encloses 0. So we can say that the circulation of our pole is 3 times 2 pi i as long as our loop encloses 8 and is otherwise 0. As we sweep across exponential terms, we get that our answer for the original time-based function, 6 pi i times the integral of all exponential terms divided by s minus 8. Poles have unique properties that send all exponential terms, except for the term that matches the denominator, to 0. As we integrate over this domain, therefore, everything is sent to 0 except for this e to the 8t term, which is our original time-based function. Again, check out our paper for more information. Because the Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms help us to solve differential equations, they are extensively used in many areas of engineering and physics. These include areas such as, but not limited to, control theory, mechanical, electrical, fluid, and thermodynamics, nuclear physics, and statistical mechanics.